You guys really liked the candle from that last video, so I lit it again. I need to do something on this wall. That's beside the point. Today we're talking about backup and specifically uh, backup for creators. Why, if you're a creator, whether that means you're a photographer, a videographer, a cinematographer, a YouTuber, I think everyone needs to have a backup. Now, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I've been using for backups for the last 10 years, which is this Drobo here. Why I recently just switched to the Synology. I think this is the DS1621 Plus. I'll just kind of give you guys some general overview on what backup is, different ways to do backup, uh, what's kind of most cost effective, what's gonna help you be most successful, and why I chose this particular setup that I did to sort of maximize um, my ability to create. That's actually a really, I think, important thing because I've heard some YouTubers talk about, hey, I just shoot video and I once I finish the edit, I throw everything away. I have tried really hard not to do that. As you're growing as a creator, when you put content out there, if you have the ability in your future content to reference your past content when it's relevant and use some of those assets from those past projects in your future projects, that allows your past projects to kind of continue to pay dividends for you and get sort of new life by being referenced in that video. When I made the Trinity video talking about Canon's RF Trinity lenses, I have the uh, a couple of those up there right now and the 15 to 35 is on this body right here in front of me. But that was a really cool opportunity where I was able to pull a video from a vlog back in July and put that into a video here in September. And I would have been, I would not have been able to do that had I not grabbed all that footage and saved it and stored it. And I'm excited to see how that will continue to pay dividends one, two, three years into the future. Right out the gate, I wanna talk about price because I think a lot of people can look at big systems like uh, these Drobos and Synologies and even just hard drives that uh, you know can cost hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars once you start populating these with drives. And that can look kind of expensive, but if you're looking at paying hundreds of dollars for hard drives every year, or paying cloud storage a few, you know, 10, 20, even 50 bucks a month, that'll add up, yeah, 50 bucks a month, even 20 bucks a month, you're looking at 250 bucks a year. I don't think most people who are doing video are gonna be able to sustain on that low of a budget, but it is an investment that you are going to have to make. And I think it's important to look at how long you can amateurize that investment over time. Uh, for something like this Drobo, I've had it for 10 years. The upfront price, I think these, uh, when they originally came out, were maybe around $600 to $800, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I originally had all one terabyte drives in here, which I think at the time probably cost me around, <laughs> probably cost me around a couple hundred bucks each. Since then, I replaced it in the last somewhere in the last five to six years with two terabyte drives. So this has been an investment, but it's been over 10 years and uh, it's it has served me well, but uh, switching over to something like the Synology uh, was kind of long overdue. Uh, the Synology that I have here is the Disk Station 1621 Plus. This actually just has these little hard drive bays that you can slide out really easy like that, where like the Drobo is like this magnetic front on, uh, on here. Super dusty, I gotta clean that. Ooh, but this is actually decommissioned. I, uh, I'm not using it anymore. This is a Gen 2 with like Firewire 800 and it's it's just very old and uh, it was about time to get replaced. So something that you've probably heard when it comes to backup is RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. What that just means is that you have multiple disks kind of working together to have some redundancy for your data, wherein if one of those disks fails, you can replace it, the RAID can rebuild itself, and you can have uh, continue to have access to your data and not be, not be losing data. Now, with the Drobo, it only had one disk redundancy, at least in this four pack of disks here. I think they make a five pack, but last I checked, Drobo's store was sold out. Both of these systems have a hybrid RAID solution, and what that means is, where in the past with most RAID setups, you'd have to have the same exact size disc in order to build a RAID. These can accept sort of any size disc from like one terabyte to I think, in here I have 12 terabyte discs now. What that allows you to do is it allows you to grow your storage at a pace 
that makes sense for you, your budget, and the work that you're putting on it. Now the difference between these two setups is something called direct attached storage or DAS, and network attached storage, NAS. You've probably heard either of those terms or acronyms. Uh, direct attached storage just means that this has to be directly attached to a computer. I've had this attached to like an old Mac mini so it could still kind of serve up files as like a NAS. And this Synology here uh, doesn't need to be attached to it. It just has ethernet ports in the back and that can go attached to your router and uh, get you get you connected to your data. I brought out a ton of these disks because I was one of these people that while this was getting full, I was thinking ah, maybe I can buy a couple extra hard drives. But if you're someone who is a professional creative, I don't think this is the way to go, at least not for your long-term backup. I'm sure, maybe you're gonna have one of these on you when you travel to back up your stuff on the go so you at least have two copies of it. But uh, I would highly recommend getting something like this, especially if you are going to be doing video. I think for photographers, you probably don't need something as large as the Synology. I'm, I'm shooting on the Canon EOS R5 with that 45 megapixel sensor. Video is massive. I shoot in 4K. I shoot in the 4K down sample from 8K. I hope to start shooting in 8K once I get that Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. Uh, and those are just massive files. Like every time I sit down here to record a YouTube video, that's about 50 gigs. Uh, photography with this camera is wild. It's I average I think about 50 megabytes per image. And most of my shoots are somewhere between like 300 and 500 images. So really quickly that turns into just gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of info. I actually I produce nearly I think a terabyte of data every single month, which is now kind of wild. Uh, but when I was first starting out shooting 1080p video on the EOS R and doing just you know some photography here and there, not necessarily doing like full-time photography stuff, that was a lot less. I think I was maybe producing like 50 gigs um, versus like now a terabyte, which is 20 times as much data. Uh, so it does depend on how much data you're producing. I would recommend if you don't know how much data you're producing monthly and how much you want to be able to archive monthly, look at those numbers first and look at sort of what the last 12 months look like if you have that data. It's really easy just like look back at your folders and see what you're doing and look back at your hard drives. Uh, and then start doing some projections in the future. If you know, hey, for the next year, I hope to be shooting as much as I've been shooting this year, put that together. Another nice thing about the Synology and also the Drobo, but you don't have to actually buy hard drives for all of these. You can buy an empty Synology and start putting drives in as you go. So like right now, I only have two drives in the Synology here. I'll pop one of these out right here. So I only have two hard drives in this Synology, even though it's a six base Synology, and I can add more drives as I go, but what I found right now is um, two 12 terabyte drives inside of this, sort of in that Synology redundancy, gives me more than enough storage than I've ever had in the Drobo with four two terabyte drives in here. But I will need to start adding drives probably by the end of this year, going into next year, to be able to save all that data and, um, have a copy of it. Now, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily consider yourself technical or you're like, I don't wanna deal with the overhead of having uh, another computer system, can't I just keep buying hard drives and putting them on my laptop? These setups are not hard to use. They're very straightforward. I think I got the Synology set up in about five minutes. I was gonna make a video about it, but it was it was just that easy. I just plugged it in. The like instructions were three steps. It was like, plug it into power, plug it into your network, go to this address on your web browser, as long as it's on the same network, and it was ready to go. It was pretty cool. Uh, it was pretty easy to get going. The other awesome thing with the Synology is there is a USB 3 port on the back. What that allows you to do is it allows you to connect a hard drive, something like one of these here over like USB, and just uh, direct attached copy all your data over. And that's really nice because then you don't have to like have four hard drives connected to your laptop trying to copy it over your network back to the Synology. You can kind of just plug everything in that you want to copy off and start that that process. That actually saved me a lot of time. I think when I was trying to copy all my hard drives and the Drobo over the network, it was gonna take days. Uh, I think it took like maybe eight hours of copying uh, to get everything onto the Synology. That's for like the last three years of my content. That was pretty cool. One thing I do want to note with the Synology is uh, you can buy these like M2 caching SSDs for the Synology. I got them to see if they would help speed up transfers over the network. 
I personally didn't find that it helped that much. I don't think you need these unless you're gonna have multiple people working off of the device. And even then I kind of wonder how much uh, good this is doing for me. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, for most creators, what I recommend is I don't think you need to get the M2 caching to uh, speed up. I think as is the Synology is more than enough. I was recommending the Drobo for the longest time. I thought it, it was solid and it is like the fact that this thing lasted 10 years, not a single problem is incredible. And honestly, I think if I don't know what's going on with Drobo, to be honest, I tried going to their store to see if I get another one of these to do a proper test to see, hey, what would like a Drobo, what's the latest version of Drobo versus Synology, what would that look like? Uh, all of their products are out of stock and I have not seen any of their stuff come in stock in months. Synology, I was able to get this off of B&H and have it shipped to me in like two days. So far the Synology software is great and I'm already seeing that this is probably gonna be the device that I recommend to uh, most creators. Uh, they do have a, I think, 12 or a two disc option that I would recommend if you're just doing photography and maybe doing like light, just a little bit of like 1080p video, you could probably get away with that two bay. Otherwise, I think if you're shooting video for YouTube, especially in 2021, and you want something that can last you uh, another five, 10 years, uh, go with the 16 to 21. Lastly, I just wanna say this, with hard drives getting as cheap as they are, like uh, go look at any chart, like hard drives have gotten so cheap where the cost per gigabyte has gone down from like, I think it was $10 a gigabyte in like 2000, in 2010, I think it was 10 cents a gigabyte. Now it's, it, it's pennies for a gigabyte. You can buy a 12 terabyte drive now for I think like 300 bucks, which is really, it's wild. And the thing like a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. So if you're shooting like on an APS-C camera, or even if you're shooting on something like a Canon EOS R, R5, R6, it'll take you a while to fill that. And I think having that data on hand, having backups of what you're doing, allows you to tell your story as a creator more effectively. It allows you to, like I said, reference your past in a really, I think, important way that can pay pay dividends for you. So for any creator out there, uh, I highly recommend getting a backup solution that allows you to save everything that you're doing and um, allows you to get access to it really quick and easy. Um, no more having to fiddle with hard drives, all these external hard drives, and trying to keep a catalog of what's on where, taking tape and putting that over something, just being like, oh yeah, this is or this is October 2016, right? And it's like, oh, I gotta go find that hard drive, and then you're carrying around all these hard drives. This just makes it a lot easier. So with that, thank you so much for watching. My name is Stephen Foster. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you are not already. I am honored by all of you who already have. Thank you so much. Please be kind, both on life and in the comments below. Like this video to send good vibes. And actually, I would, I would ask, leave a comment down below with some of your backup questions and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Maybe we'll do a video talking just about how I like structure files and folders on this thing, how I actually share this storage with my wife, who's also a creator, how we kind of work together on projects using these types of tools. Um, let me know if that stuff interests you down in the comments below and we will do it again soon. Oh, isn't this great? Thanks, Elon.